Today we're going to explain the hopcroft carp algorithm, which finds the maximum matching set in a bipartite graph. A bipartite graph is a graph whose vertices can be separated into two disjoint sets, such that nodes from one set are only connected to nodes from the other set. A matching is a set of edges, whose edges without common vertices, i.e. pairing vertices from one set to vertices from another set. A maximum matching, which is what the algorithm finds, is a ma matching that contains the greatest possible number of edges. The hopcroft karp algorithm runs in order E root V time, where E is the set of edges and V is the set of vertices. And it works by iteratively finding augmenting paths and using them to increase the size of the matching set. We'll explain some of these terms in the next few slides. This is a bipartite graph. As you can see, there are two sets of vertices set U and set V, and each vert vertex in U is only connected to vertices in set V. This is a matching set. It's a set of edges that pairs vertices from U to vertices from V. In a matching set, no two edges can share an endpoint. A free vertex is one which is not part of the matching set. So there is no edge connecting that vertex, which is part of the matching set. An alternating path is a path of edges such that every other edge is part of the matching set. All single edge paths are alternating paths. A special case is an augmenting path, which is an alternating path which starts and ends on a free vertex. The path shown here is not an augmenting path, as U2 is part of the matching set as it is connected to a green edge. This is an augmenting path because U2 and V1 are both free vertices. A maximum matching is a matching set which contains the greatest possible number of edges. A matching set is a maximum if no augmenting path exists. This is not a maximum matching as there is an augmenting path, just a single edge from U0 to V1. Here is some pseudocode for the algorithm. First, we create a new empty matching set. Then we enter our main while loop, which will continue to find new augmenting paths until no augmenting paths remain. We start by finding a new augmenting path. In this case, we've called it P. Then we find the symmetric difference of our augmenting path and our matching set. What this means is that if an edge is a member of the, both the matching set and the augmenting path, we remove it. And if it is a member of the augmenting path but not the matching set, we add it. When no augmenting path remains, we exit our while loop and we return our matching set. Here is an example of the algorithm. We start by creating a new empty matching set. We then find a new augmenting path. In this case, it's just a single edge. We augment the matching set. In this case, we just add the new edge. The next iteration, we find a new single edge augmenting path. And again, we add it. We find another single edge augmenting path and add that too. Here we find a longer augmenting path and use it to augment our matching set. We add an edge here, remove the middle edge which is a member of both sets and add another edge. It's important to note that each time we augment our matching set we are increasing its size by one. No augmenting path remains so this is a maximum matching. We can confirm this as there are no free vertices and if there are no free vertices there are no augmenting paths. It is important to remember that there may be free vertices remaining. Imagine a situation where there is an extra free vertex in set V. Here, there will be the same number of edges in the maximum matching, and a free vertex will remain, but there are no more augmenting paths. Overall, this finds the maximum matching in order E root V time. I will now give a brief overview of the time complexity of the algorithm. We can find an augmenting path using breadth first search in order e time, where e is the set of edges. Normally a breadth first search will take order e plus v time. 
but in the worst case scenario we'll have a very dense graph and the number of vertices will be much less than the number of edges and so we've omitted the number of vertices to make our time complexity simpler. We can augment our matching set in order e time, you can see this in the pseudocode, as we loop through each edge once. In the end, our time complexity works out as order e root v time. You have seen in the pseudocode that we find augmenting paths, and may be wondering how we do this. We do this by using a breadth first search and a depth first search. We start by running a breadth first search starting in three vertices in set U and ending on three vertices in set V. Our breadth first search traverses unmatched and matched edges alternately. This is used to partition the graph into layers, where our three vertices in set U are layer one and our vertices in set V are layer two, and so on. The breadth first search terminates when it finds a layer containing three vertices from set V. Now we, we run a depth first search from the three vertices in set V up to the three vertices in set U. It's important to remember that the algorithm is finding a maximal set of vertex disjoint augmenting paths. This means that no two paths can have any vertices in common. Here we can see our first path from V0 to U2. Now we try and find a new path from V2 upwards, but we hit vertex U0, and so we cannot traverse it as it has already been traversed. This will result in a set of augmenting paths, in this case, just a single augmenting path from U2 to V0. In summary, the hopcroft karp algorithm finds the maximum matching in a bipartite graph. It does this in order E root V time, and it finds the maximum matching by augmenting a matching set with augmenting paths. It uses an alternating level graph to find these augmenting paths.